What's up, weirdos? My name's Murdoch, and the time is nigh for Coaster History. Opening May 21st, 1978, this 40-year-old shuttle loop located in Fiesta Village at Knott's Berry Farm in Bueno Park, California, shares its name with both a 1984 platform game and an intestinal disease commonly known as traveler's diarrhea called Montezuma's Revenge. Luckily, there's a fun twist added to the spelling of this flywheel launch coaster to make it Montezuma's. We can just hope it wasn't entirely inspired by having explosive diarrhea. Anyway, from zero to 55 in 4.5 seconds, you're being launched straight into a loop, which is followed by a tower, much like counterweighting techniques used on early switchback coasters. You reverse direction and use that same momentum to slide back into the loop, through the station, and up a second tower, and back home. Zuma is the longest running shuttle loop coaster that you can still ride today and has hardly been touched since she was built. That's what makes Zuma amazing. She is our proof of the 12 shuttle loop installations made by Anton Schwarzkopf and Werner Stengel between 1977 and 1982. You almost have to say it with the German accent. While looking at these 12, we can group them into two categories, weight drop launch and flywheel launch. The weight drop launch was used... Wow, lots of tongue twisters in this episode. The weight drop launch was used mostly between the earlier years of the project, and it's exactly what it sounds like. Your train would be attached to a cable with standing significant weight on the other end. Once the weight was dropped, you're sent flying. The first weight drop launch was used on King Cobra, which moved between King's Dominion, Jolly Rogers, and also identified as the Thunderlooper and Catapult, at Alton Towers and Hopi Hari. The flywheel launch uses and stores rotational energy. For power up to, say, 55 miles per hour in 4.5 seconds, the flywheel can spin at over 1,000 revolutions per minute, which you receive these revolutions as it propels you forward. The first flywheel models were both Montezuma and Grease Lightning at Kentucky Kingdom. And as of 2009, when Lightning was closed, Zuma is the only operating flywheel launch shuttle loop coaster. Woo! And she's actually a lot taller than I expected her to be. So what is the inspiration for this 12 coaster project? Once you become familiar with the creative history of Anton's partnership with Stengel, the answer is undeniable. Anton Schwarzkopf, a German engineer and founder of Schwarzkopf Industries Company. He had an avid background in all things circus. His father specialized in creating trailers designed just for large amounts of circus equipment. So once the company transitioned into making rides, it wasn't shocking to know that their first roller coaster, Dusen Spiral, was completely portable. And it would be this traveling coaster that introduced Schwarzkopf to Werner Stengel. Forgive me for how I'm pronouncing their names. Stengel is also a German engineer, but mostly plays a larger role in designing. He is the founder of Stengel Engineering, which is responsible for over 500 coasters worldwide. After 1963, a beautiful partnership blossomed and resulted in many groundbreaking coasters. From the modern vertical looping coaster revolution in 1976, which utilized the clothoid loop that produced a lesser force on the rider compared to the circular vertical loop, all the way to coasters like Mindbender at Six Flags Over Georgia, which is a 1978 blast to the past that you can still enjoy today. And these men love their loops. It's no wonder that this partnership was revolutionary. With the competition in the 70s skyrocketing, with coasters like the Corkscrew, debuting by Aero Development, aka Dynamics, the shuttle loop was born. Zuma is the last survivor of this project, but stands proud with her history as the tallest coaster between 1978 and 1983. In 2016, it was rumored for Zuma to be removed, but it ended up not being finalized, so luckily, we will get to keep her for at least a little while longer 
Thank you, weirdos, for tuning in. And until next time, peace out and ride on.